What's up guys, Dr. Dub here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Roller Coaster Tycoon. This is going to be the first ever Let's Play I've done, as well as my first ever YouTube video I've made. So, if it's awful, I'm apologizing in advance. I hope it's not, but if it's awful, well, it's a, it can only get better from there. So, this is a game that came out a long time ago. I used to play this all the time when I was a wee lad. <laughs> I would play this pretty much as my sole game. Uh, I played it so much to the point my computer couldn't handle it anymore, and that's pretty much what made me stop playing it, not I outgrew it. Uh, but this game is, it came out, I believe, in 1990, March of 1999. So that makes this game, as of today, today is July 31st, 2017, that makes this game 18 years and four months old. It is officially an adult. I am excited to get back into this game to see how well it's stood the test of time, to see how well it's aged, if it's as fun as I remember it. But let me just tell you, looking at these, just this opening menu here, I am really excited. Um, the music, the graphics, they're not great, but oh man, I cannot wait. So let's get into this. This is going to be somewhat of a tutorial to begin with, at least that's how I'm planning on structuring it. Um, partly for you guys who have never watched this to kind of learn what I'm doing uh, so you can see what's going on and I'll also kind of explain my thought processes and why I do the things that I do. Um, but as we get into it, that will slowly taper off and I'll just be playing this game, one to log my progress for you guys and just to show you the game. It is a fantastic game and with that said, let's get into it. Uh, this is the Deluxe Edition. It comes with the original as well as both expansions, the Corkscrew Follies and Loopy Landscape Packs, as well as some real parks that exist out there in the real world. So, let's get started. Uh, this first map is Forest Frontiers, and each map has an objective. And so, this map's objective is to have at least 250 guests in your park at the end of October year one with a park rating of at least 600. So we start in March. That doesn't give us a whole lot of time. Uh, let me go ahead and pause the game so I can explain some of this stuff without wasting too much time. So, uh, 250 guests, that's just however many people we need in the park, which is down here at the bottom left. In a park rating, I don't even know exactly what composes all of that. Uh, it's just a combination of your guests' satisfaction and how much revenue your park is making, I think. I'm not even sure. But let's find out, because it's been a while. So I'm going to unpause it and let's get started. So I've opened the park. We don't have anything built, so I'm going to let people in for free right now. That'll change soon, though. And let's just start off by building a ride. Um, this icon right here is the rides and attractions menu. And if I scroll through these, I think it shows up. Yeah, transport rides, gentle rides, roller coasters, thrill rides, water rides, and shops and stalls. Uh, so let's go ahead and build something basic to start with. Let's go ahead and do scrambled eggs. They all have their own name. Whenever you build them, um, let me actually build it before I finish that thought. Whenever you build them, they need an entrance and an exit so people can get on the ride and people can get off the ride. Uh, you can also rename the rides. I It's a pet peeve of mine. I do not. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at that cursor. <laughs> that is massive. I don't think there's much I can do about that. Again, this game is, I think, in it's six... 640 by 480 resolution, I believe, as opposed to today's uh, 1980 by, I forget what those dimensions are, 1980 by 1020, uh, whatever it is, they're not standard widescreen dimensions, as you can clearly tell by the black bars on the side of the video. Anyway, that's why this is probably happening. Um, I hate the number one after every ride, so I'm going to delete that, and I need a pathway so my guests can get on the ride. And then I'm going to set the price to about a dollar. We don't know how successful it's going to be yet, so let's just leave it at that. If people love it, we'll make it more expensive. If they don't, we won't. Um, we'll keep that free for now. Okay, um, what did I want to do? So you can set the price here. It shows you kind of how much you're making per hour, how much it's costing to run per hour. Uh, this is a simulator, a theme park simulator, so there are some realistic aspects to it, that being one of them. Um, now I'm losing money because it's been open for at least an hour. <laughs> um, it shows you the excitement, intensity, and nausea rating. Excitement is basically how fun is it, not intensity. 
um, each guest kind of has their own level of intensity that they like. Uh, so if it's a really intense ride, you won't get the ones that like the really gentle rides to ride it. And it's raining. Oh, but listen to that rain. It's beautiful. I love it. I love the sound effects in this game. Uh, and then nausea is exactly what it says. Really high nausea rating is going to make people throw up. And while I'm thinking of that, let me go ahead and build a restroom. Some people, like in real life, are courteous enough to take their business to the restroom before they upchuck all over the sidewalk. Others won't make it in time and they'll end up puking on the sidewalk. So uh, we'll make our restrooms free. I don't want to charge people to puke or go to the restroom. That just doesn't seem, that seems cruel. Uh, but if they do puke on the sidewalk, we need a handyman to clean it up. So let's go ahead and hire a handyman. Um, what? Sorry for if I'm pausing a bunch. It's been so long since I've played this game, I'm trying to remember how to play it. Uh, you can set what the handyman can do. They can sweep the footpaths, which is what I mainly want them doing. If you have flower beds, they can water the grass. We don't have any, or water the flowers. Trash cans, we'll need to set some of those out. Uh, and then they also mow the grass. And I'm going to uncheck that because I feel like they have a tendency to only do that ever. That's pretty much all they ever do if you let them mow the grass. Um, okay, no one seems to want to go on that ride. So let's build something else as well. Let's build a haunted house. If I remember right, these things were kind of popular. So let's build that there. Again, we need walkways. And the size of your line dictate how many people can stand in the line. Um, I don't want that there. There we go. Um, the size of your line will dictate how many people can stand in the line. And if you have too long of a line, people will spend way too much time waiting and then they'll get unhappy. Um, this is also another thing to point out. You want your guests to stay on paths. This guy will probably wander forever and ever and ever and probably die. Uh, that can actually happen. So, uh, what's that? He wants to go on something more thrilling than Haunted House 1. So that's another thing about this game, is your guests actually give you feedback on pretty much everything. They'll tell you if something's too intense, if they think something costs too much. Um, they, they're pretty honest. They will give you feedback. Um, okay, so what, what else do we need to build? So we've got a restroom, two rides. Let's build some food stalls. So what do we have? Ice cream, burger, and drinks. So I'm going to go ahead and build all of these. Just because it's easy. And giving people options for food, I think, is good. I don't know if it actually makes a difference. Or if it just gives you more options to make money. Um, but I do it anyway. Uh, also, on all your rides... I, I'm not sure about rides, but on all your stalls at least, you have the option to check this box. Same price throughout the park. That does exactly what it says. It's going to make every burger stand or burger bar or whatever I build, every one of that type costs the same throughout the park. And I like doing that because I don't see the point in really making it different priced. I don't believe it's quite like real life where if it's in a desolate area, it's the only thing you can charge exorbitant prices because people will pay it. I don't think that's how it works, so... If it is, someone please correct me, but all right. I think that's all of our stalls. It is. Okay, let's build another ride. Let's do it right here. That looks good. Um, and I know I'm building very small right now, just the pre-built stuff, but we will get to building custom rides very soon. Possibly not this episode. Actually, definitely not this episode. We'll save that for next episode, but... It is coming soon, so do not fret. And that's the, that's in my opinion, the most fun part about this game is building your own custom roller coasters and designing them and coloring them and making them look awesome. Speaking of coloring, this tab right here, the paintbrush, painting the rainbow, you can change how rides look, which really, if you're trying to like theme an area, which I definitely do, I think it's it can be a lot of fun. So black and red. Now we'll do black and white. Or red and white. That looks good. Not much different than the original, but that's okay. 150, it's open. Again, everything's very low excitement. We need to build something a little bit more thrilling. But first, um, so this is the uh, scenery and gardens tab. You can build 
did not mean to close that. You can build trees, uh, bushes, more exotic looking trees, flower beds of all different styles, colors. And then what I'm wanting to build are some trash cans. So as people eat food, um, they create trash. And if they don't have a place to put it, they're just going to drop it on the ground. Uh, and we don't want that. So I like to put a couple throughout the park. And if you remember on the handyman tab under their, on their jobs, one of the things that they can do is empty litter bins. Uh, so instead of having to sweep up trash on the ground, which will cause your guests to be kind of grossed out by it, and that in turn lowers your park rating, which is, I believe, this right here. 550, and what did I need? 600, okay. So we're making good progress. It's that we started in March, we're in April. And if you hover your mouse over that, yeah, okay, it's April 4th. Uh, we missed April Fools, I apologize. <laughs> Um, what else? Okay, so this flask right here, not not the alcohol type, but the, uh, I think it's an Erlenmeyer flask, the sciencey flask. Um, this is the research and development tab, and if I rem remember, if I could put my words together, uh, you have different levels of funding you can do, and in turn, that costs various amounts, so maximum is 400, normal 200, minimum is 100, and no funding would obviously be free. Um, so we're going to do maximum funding, 400 a month, but that gives you more rides. So you don't have access to every ride from the start. Obviously, this is not a great selection. I can't build any crazy fun stuff yet. Um, that comes with time. And the more money you invest into research and development, the more uh, rides and upgrades for rides and all of that will be unlocked. Um, so let's go ahead and build a spiral slide. I know it's not very intense, but that's okay. Again, we're starting basic, and we will up the ante very soon. Um, I guess another note for this this footpath menu. So you can build cues, and you can actually build different colors if you click and hold. I think that, yeah, you click and hold, and you can do different colors of lines. Um, we'll do this one red. Why not? And then you also have different footpath options there as well. And I think they all cost the same amount. I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to do some looking into that later. Uh, and then this allows you to do bridges. Um, or actually, I think it just changes the support structure style for whenever you do an elevated platform. Um, in order to do that, right now I'm using just the placement tool. You can just place stuff wherever. Um, and you can right click to delete. Um, or you can use this, which allows you to do elevation changes. Um, you click the direction you want it to head, and then you can use the slopes to increase or decrease. Yeah, see that changed the support structure style. Oh, if I hovered my mouse, it says that. Select support structure. Wish I had known that. Okay, so we'll keep it flat, but just showing you guys that. And you can see we just got a new ride, the Ferris wheel. So we can quickly access it by clicking that right there. We're gonna go ahead and build the Ferris wheel. Then we might build I don't know what we're gonna build next uh, I should probably open this ride before I start building other things shouldn't I uh, dollar we'll drop that down to a dollar instead of dollar fifty so this is a very not exciting ride uh, we're gonna rename it ooh we're actually gonna name it helter skelter the reason I got back into this game is actually I was on my phone the other day and I was kind of bored and I was kind of tired of the mobile games I had on my phone and so I went to the app store and I was looking around and I found a roller coaster tycoon touch game that is a mobile roller coaster tycoon and I remembered how much I loved this game and so I decided to see if I could get it for Windows 10 sure enough they had it and here I am uh, <laughs> that's the story there so what I'm doing right now is you can adjust the attraction operation options uh on the roller coasters you have some pretty cool stuff you can do from here but on this it's a child slide it's not super exciting uh, so you can do a single ride per mission or unlimited rides per admission so they wait in line they pay the admission fee at the entrance and then they could ride it as many times as they wanted repeatedly and then get off i'm not going to do that i'm a stickler for money so they're gonna stay at single rides, uh, maximum people on the ride. This just makes the line move faster, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, an inspection every 30 minutes. We'll keep it at that. And speaking of inspection, I need to hire a mechanic. So rides will actually break down over time. 
uh, and that inspection allows them to be preemptively inspected to make sure they don't break down. I believe it works on sort of somewhat of a timer system, so after X amount of time, which is randomly decided every time, it's going to break down. But if you have them inspect it, it sort of resets that timer, um, allowing it to not break down. It's more of a proactive approach than a reactive approach, having that inspection time lower. Um, but this is my mechanic right here, looking pretty cool. Um, you can also set foot pads for your, uh, your staff. And I like doing that because it limits where they can walk. Um, so when mechanics service a ride, they go in through the exit. And I think these foot paths work in a four by four block. Um, and you need to have them covering the foot paths. And I could be mistaken, but I've always done this and I'm probably going to continue doing it unless I get corrected. Uh, they need to actually cover the exit itself. Right now it's just leading up to the path. I'm going to actually cover the exit there. Um, and i got to make sure that I have all my exits covered and the pathway leading to that exit. So pretty much everything. I just don't want them going up the front of the park there. So, all right, that's it for him. I know I said I don't like, or I like naming my rides or at least removing the one on their title. I don't do that with staff or with guests because there's way too many of them to do that so close out of that oh another thing about rides uh i think i mentioned this earlier about they give you feedback um you can see that guy's about to throw up <laughs> oh look at that face yeah so each guest has their own happiness energy hunger thirst nausea so he needs to go to the bathroom and throw up very soon uh, nausea tolerance, none. So I don't have any intense rides in this park and he is already about to puke. So he could not handle a roller coaster, for example. Uh, but as they're walking, if you see him like turn away from a ride or something, you can actually look at their thoughts. It's kind of creepy, but you can see they think things are really good value. They're sick. They want to go on something more thrilling. That'll happen soon once I actually build a roller coaster. But they basically give you feedback on your park. Uh, sometimes it's kind of indirect. Uh, this is a really good value. It means you have it priced appropriately. Um, sometimes they'll even say they think it was too cheap, which is an indication that you can up the price on that ride. Um, let me go back to that menu there. You can actually see how much each individual has on them when they come in the park. You can see how much they've spent to get in, how much they spent on ride, food, drink, souvenirs, all that. So... It's a really fun simulator, uh, and I love this game, but okay, now that we have a couple rides built up, I'm actually going to let people in for $5, and you can see already see we're making money from that. We've had 175 people come in, or I guess 173 before that updated, that it came in for free, and so I'm not going to let that happen anymore. We're going to take people's money. <laughs> Okay, um, so we've got food, we've got drink, we've got restrooms, we've got some basic rides. Are there any other basic rides we can build? Ferris wheel. Yeah, okay, so we're going to just build this Ferris wheel real quick. And, ooh, I forgot to do one thing. We will fix that very soon. So we'll make this right down the middle here. No, we won't. I want to extend that pathway later. Okay, so the entrance... We'll actually do the entrance over here. Exit over here. Okay, let me just connect these paths real quick. I'll do blue again. So you can see it connected to that path instead of this one right here. In order to fix that, you basically just have to delete the path it could connect to by right-clicking it. And then redo it so it connects to the only option right there. Um... Oh, one other thing you can do, this isn't a super necessary thing I'm going to do right now, but I'm going to do it anyway just for demonstration purposes. In the uh, scenery tab, you can go to this sign right here and you can label different areas of your park, which is really cool. Uh, we'll go ahead and open that up real quick. Okay, so you can label different areas of your park. Right now it says Happy Land, which is a great title, but not for the exit of a merry-go-round. What I'm wanting to use it for is a no entry sign. So unlike real life, people in this game actually read signs uh, and they will obey them. So no one except uh, faculty, not faculty, this isn't school, no one but staff will be able to walk through that sign. So any guests, 
basically the guest uh, pathfinding feature, they will continue walking and then they will ram randomly choose to go left or right. So when they come to this intersection, it is a random decision whether they're going to go, going to go left or going to go right. Uh, so right here, when they get to this exit, they have two options, turn around or go to the right. It's not a huge deal right now because this is such a small path. New ride attraction now available, log flume, awesome. Um, so it's not a huge deal because it's such a small path, but if you had a really long exit for, let's say, a super popular ride, that would just be wasted time that guests could just walk and get lost and not be near all the entrances to all of your rides and all your food and spending money at your park. So if you put these do not enter signs or the no entry signs, they will be restricted to the areas that you leave them in, forcing them to spend their money, which <laughs> I like taking my guest money. That's how you do well in this game. Uh, okay, so we're in May, halfway through May. We need 250 total. Okay, so we need about 100 more guests. Our park rating, what are we doing? We are well above our park rating, so everyone's happy enough. Let me actually see if it says, I don't know how you can tell what influences this, but we're doing okay. I think that's when we actually uh, opened our park and started charging money. <laughs> as funny as that is, or that might be here, I don't know. Um, what else is here? You can actually win awards for your park if you have it really well decorated or you have lots of good rides. There's a lot of stuff to this game and we'll get into that over time. But for now, I think that's gonna do it for this first episode. Um, we sit here, as we sit here and listen to this wonderful music, which I don't even remember how to change. Anyway, we'll figure that out later. I'm rambling now. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this episode. Thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, like I said, this is my first YouTube video ever. I am brand new to all of this, so I apologize if it's bad or not great. It will get better, I promise. I've watched a lot of Let's Players on YouTube and all of them talk about how difficult it is to talk while doing other things in the game that are productive. Like right now, I'm just kind of sitting here talking to you guys because I actually want to have a conversation. Um, but a lot of them say how difficult it is to talk and play at the same time and I can definitely attest to that it's it's difficult but I'm hoping I learn I get better I get better at editing figure out how to make my auto audio quality even better and we just learn together from here so any comments would be much appreciated uh, as I learn and try to grow so thank you very much for watching I'll see you guys next time